All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get Ben on the show. So Ben, what what was the what was the price of AHR when you first came on the show and pitched it? What's up, guys? Yeah, when I first came on the show, it was around five dollars, five forty, somewhere somewhere in the low fives, I believe it was. Yeah. And when we first presented it to our VIP community, when I presented it as a trade idea, it was two dollars and seventy four cents. It went all the way up to twenty seven. So it was a ten bagger if you captured that. And I happened to have pretty much captured that. I was diamond handing this from two seventy four. I didn't sell my first shares until 16, and then um, I sold a lot more in the in the 20 to 25, 26 range. I maybe even gotten a little bit of 27. So, um, yeah, got got a few updates for you on on that and a couple other stocks. You got a new background. This is the first time we're seeing this. It looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, a lot more work to do. We got to get uh, better mics and cameras and everything. But yeah, this is the first time anyone's seeing this background. Cool. <laughs> you wow. got, you got right, well, a new set too, it looks like. We did. It took us far too long, but we eventually got it together. <laughs> yeah, Rohan, yeah. can we get a zoom out so Ben can see our beautiful set? There it is. Oh, 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 wow. That's great, man. <laughs> Um, all right, Ben, you want to go ahead and get your screen shared and we can go ahead and run through those slides real quick. I know we only yeah. got about 10 minutes, so we've got a few all stocks right. to hit on. I'll work. I'll be fast. All right. Mm. There we go. All right. So, yeah, first we got that quick disclaimer. We got to always do that uh, story trading is not investment advisor and investing in securities and loss can make risk of loss. Those of you who are new to story trading, what is it? Story trading is the practice of understanding market pricing. We also call that the story behind the trade through the four pillars, which we say are sentiment, catalyst, fundamentals, and technicals. That allows us to take a holistic look at markets and make choices based on all of these factors, not just one of them. So AIR Story Trade Idea Update, I officially opened that in my community on July 8th at 274. I did close it on November 8th at 2579. I still own some shares. Uh, I ended up selling about 90 to 95% of my shares uh, Monday morning was really the trigger for me. And that's because I saw something in the technicals and also the sentiment, which uh, caused me to say, let me let me lock in these gains. And the technicals last Friday was the first solid green candle on the chart. You can go look it up. The first solid green candle and the entire run up, which, which means it started the day high and then went down lower throughout the day. And throughout this entire run, it was starting low and going higher throughout the day. I took that to be a reversal sign Plus the sentiment, I think we reached peak EV sentiment for now for this cycle with uh, Elon Musk selling shares of Tesla with the Rivian IPO with the excitement over EV infrastructure. I'm trying to time that sentiment top. So I took my profits. I am keeping about 5% of my shares because it could go much higher still if they get the right contracts in the future. Got it. Um, so took some money off the table, trimmed some of your position in air, took those profits, never a bad move. Uh, ben, what else is on your radar today? Yeah, I wanted to give you an update on SMSI because I was on your show July 26. We presented this at $5.70. Uh, this is a stock that's been up 66% since it was initiated in our community. At the time, we said, hey, T-Mobile's coming end of month in August. It didn't happen then, but it happened last night. Uh, so a few updates. They had earnings last night. Um, so this T-Mobile deal came three months late, but it's finally here. Now, key, this was announced last night on the conference call only. There's no PR yet. So people who are in the know, who are listening to the conference call, they have a big edge getting into the stock right now. Um, there probably will be a PR at some point in the future. And there's also tremendous traction with their other customers, AT&T and Verizon. Um, there was an upgrade today to $9, and I'm not even sure that Benzinga caught it, that upgrade by the analyst, $9 by Lake Street. But we think in our community it can go much higher. Uh, there's uh, estimates out there in our community saying we could do go up to $1.33 at EPS by 2024, which would be a $40 uh, price target. So that's the update on SMSI. You know, our investigative research worked, and we're right about T-Mobile just a few months late. So this company is going to start printing lots of cash and be a very profitable company. Do you, do you have a target uh, or, or um, stop loss? Yeah. I, no, I don't do stop losses. God forbid, man. No, I, I do story share. <laughs> I never do stop losses. So I've been holding the stock for like two or three years. I increase and, and decrease my position around Catalyst. So um, I was buying and after hours last night, I bought a lot more today. It's now my largest position actually. 
And uh, I, I'm not going to put a price target. I, I see how it goes. I, I assess the fundamental sentiment, cattles, and technicals on an ongoing basis to determine my exits. There you have it. Yep. So I, I do have a new pick that uh, I'll get to in a second. But before that, just a little quick alert, maybe something for you guys to look into and talk about, because this is a big kind of big cap for us, a $1.5 billion company, GoPro. We presented it to our community Sunday night um, because the fundamentals are super strong. They had earnings last Friday, and we had anticipated a technical breakout of the 200 DMA, which just happened this morning. And this is really, it could be a really fun situation. Wanted to bring your attention because it has, this has short and gamma squeeze potential. Very high short position mm. because sentiment has been very, very low. But the financials have completely turned around with this company. They're printing tons of cash. Now you see the technicals broke. The options are very liquid, very cheap. And if it gets into the right hands and the Reddit community, et cetera, this could be a crazy profit potential, you know, with short and gamma squeezes. So keep your eye on that, guys. But go so GoPro's up about nine percent today on the strong earnings. Um, so I, I mean I, I don't know personally, Ben, if I'm gonna go in and try to chase GoPro when it's already up ten percent, but I, I or nine percent today, but I definitely like having it on my radar. Uh, Jay Rice in the chat was also talking about GoPro, saying that he thinks it could be a long term turnaround play. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this has been one of those stocks that has just been like beaten down over time historically. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, at some point, I don't think you can ignore the fundamentals. There, Fridays when I got in, added more Monday. Uh, I got a little bit messed up on the options. Don't blame the options. So I actually lost some money because I, I got scared with the whole inflation thing yesterday. But I'm I'm in it now. And uh, yeah, the sentiment's poor. That's the only thing. People hate this company, but the, they're printing cash like crazy. The technicals are turning and short and giving squeeze potential. So just, so just watch that, guys. Yeah, my holdback with GoPro has always been that I feel like they have a very limited uh, yeah. customer base. You know, it's like who who are who's going out and get, buying GoPros? It's people that take part in extreme sports, you know, mountain bikers, snowboarders, skiers, et cetera. Outside of that, um, I, I don't know how many you know, everyday people are GoPro customers. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And I'm not, you know, I wouldn't take issue with that, but the amount of earnings they had, like 60 million EBITDA this last quarter. And if you compare it with their market cap, I mean, this thing can easily be 17 bucks, even with that, knock against it. Got it. Um, all right, Ben, what else is all on right. the radar for so, today? I have a present, it's my first story trade idea since air. I presented this to my VIP community last week. Okay, listen to the presentation. Don't just jump and buy it, guys. Okay, because of what happened with air. Every stock's not air. I can guarantee you this is not going to go up a thousand percent in the next th three months like air did. Okay, so that stock is Gaia, ticker symbol G A I A. All right, so we're going to look at. This one. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a smaller company, I think around 200 million market cap or so. But, you know, what's the story behind the trade? That's what we're trying to figure out. And again, we look at the sentiment, the fundamentals, catalyst, and, and technical. So let's start with the, with the fundamentals. Guys, a digital video subscription service, like uh, in some ways, like, like Netflix. They sell, um, they make original content for yoga, alternative health, holistic healing, nutrition. It's a monthly subscription service. They've been growing steadily over the last many quarters. They're profitable. Uh, fundamentally, I think their inflection really happened a, a quarter or two ago when, when they became profitable. And you can see some of the, uh, the trends here in terms of their, um, their revenue and uh, their EPS all going in the right direction. So in our community, we collaborate with people who are really steeped in fundamentals. This chart's courtesy of Mark Gomes. He has a risk reward chart here in terms of what is the value of this stock. And, and he thinks you know, it's worth, it could be worth at least $17 a share and the stock is very cheap here. So, so that's the fundamentals. You can check it out on your own, go look at the earnings report and you'll be able to verify everything I'm saying about uh, their growth and the subscriber growth and the money they're making right now. Uh, and it could potentially be, a, you know, Netflix may buy them out one day. You know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities here. So um, yeah, Catalyst, let's go to the next pillar uh, in these story trading four pillars. They had their earnings just recently, November 1st. It was 2020, 22% revenue growth uh, year to date compared to last year. Q3 EBITDA of $4 million, uh, EBITDA margin of 20% was their fifth straight quarter of positive earnings in cash flow. Um, and then they had an additional catalyst the next day. So we'll talk about that catalyst in just a second. What happened the day after earnings? But first, let's go to sentiment. So the sentiment is kind of poor with this stock because fundamental investors are frustrated at the price action. I know a lot of fundamental investors saying this should be worth 
17, 20, 25 bucks. Why is it ten dollars? Why isn't it moving yet? So I listen to other participants. I say, I talk to people on social media, I talk to people in my community. Why aren't you interested in this stock? And this is what I'm hearing. The total adjustable market may be too small. It may be too niche, their content. We talked about alternative medicine, yoga, meditation, things like that. So people say, I'm just not interested. It doesn't seem like a huge market. Other people say, hey, the content, they have some content that's kind of fringe on there. Fringe content, like some of that alternative medicine, there might be some videos on, you know, some vaccine hesitancy type stuff, or who knows, like some things are, it's alternative uh, content, right? So some ESG uh, buyers uh, may stay away from that, environmental social governance. So that's another knock on the sentiment. The other knock is this is just slow and steady growth. It's boring. Where's the hockey stick potential on that? So just remember, this is the poor sentiment. But this is what happened, going back to the catalyst. The next day after earnings, after we know the fundamentals are great, the next day, another catalyst hit. The other, the catalyst was, there was a PR that Demi Lovato became a brand ambassador for Gaia. And there was a press release that a lot of people didn't see uh, where Demi Lovato says, I'm excited to be one of Gaia's first celebrity ambassadors and honored to join a platform I've been a fan of for some time. She has 118 million followers on Instagram and the market cap, again, like 189 million. So this company has been you know, go, growing slow and steady and all of a sudden they, they hit you with this news of Demi Lovato, a huge mainstream personality back in the company. I wanna go back to those bear points. Hey, yeah. wait, 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 one thing, I, I saw that uh, the thing about Demi Lovato uh, oh, and, and I, I guess I didn't realize this was the same company, but like they got a lot of weird shit on their platform. And that was the sentiment I was talking to. They're saying, yeah. oh, their stuff is weird. I just don't want to own this company. But, you know, I think that, you know, they're growing steadily. They're getting to a place where they can really focus on growth now. And to me, and let me go back to that bear point. You just made that bear point. You brought it up for me, right? Yeah. They have weird stuff. It's too niche. The French it's content, they keep some buyers away. But this is where I think that Demi Lovato news is really significant because they're in a financial position now to really grow the company. And to me, this signals, and in fact, in that PR, it said, I'm excited to be one of Guy's first celebrity ambassadors. And I have a feeling this company is going to start growing their content and start getting into more mainstream content. And, and based on what she's saying, I think they may be looking for more celebrity ambassadors. And it's just a great situation because the downside is so limited. You have a fundamental floor here, and now you have optionality upside if the company starts doing things to get that hockey stick growth potential. And that's why I really added to my position here, and I'm very excited for the next several months on this stuff. Um, All technicals, right. let me just go to the last pillar of technicals. Yeah. We consulted with our awesome technician, Rex, and this is a monthly chart. Is saying uh, this can go to the 12s if it breaks out of the yellow dot here, which dot is it shorter? I think the current breakout circled right there. It's got a breakout of, I guess, 1070 area, and he thinks it can go to 12 for the, of the month. And here's another view, which looks much more bullish. This is a long view of the monthly chart. He says sometime in the future when the 12s and 13s break out at the blue line, it should proceed to break out the all time trend at the white line. And he thinks this is a, a several month play for that to happen, but you can kind of see where this can go uh, if that happens. So uh, any questions on that or any of the other stocks? Man, I, I didn't see this one coming. I didn't realize this was, I read about this company and I was like, Gee, uh, man, and I didn't even realize they're a public company until you came on here. So uh, <laughs> I'm I'm, all, I'm putting two and two together here. Yeah. Uh, ben, uh, thank you as always for coming on the show. We appreciate it and, uh, and, and, and have a good rest of your day.